thank you very much for accepting our invitation to this interview. Mm -hmm. I think you like our place. <laughs> Please tell us something about yourself. Uh, yeah, well, first of all, thank you uh, for uh, inviting me uh, here. Uh, no problem to uh, participate in the interview. Um, my name is Jeroen van der Beuke. Uh, I'm from the Netherlands, so I'm a Dutchie. Uh, I work in a group of um, regenerative biomaterials, named regenerative biomaterials, and we focus in that group on, on biomaterials, so that means materials, but also the biology. Uh, and with my background as a medical biologist, uh, I focus more on the biology. So you're coming from medicine part, not from the physician part or material part? From biology part. Or biology part. From biology part, yes. And uh, in my job, my, uh, I consider it my responsibility to look at the interaction uh, between biomaterials and the living surroundings. So in our case, we focus mostly on bone regeneration. So I think it's very important and it's extremely interesting to see how you can use materials to stimulate bone formation and also bone regeneration. Okay, why you want to be a scientist? Why I want to be in science, yeah. Um, because I'm curious and I want to know how things work. Uh, I like to play, uh, play with, with my hands, uh, play in the lab, although I do that less and less, but uh, I, I like to do that. And if you look at the composition of our group, uh, it also works in that way. So we have um, uh, material scientists, of course, uh, but also uh, chemists uh, that, uh, uh, that create materials from ions or from uh, base materials. Uh, we have engineers that develop systems and, and composite materials. Uh, uh, we have uh, a biologist like me and we have, of course, also clinicians. So the entire set makes also that you can play at every level. And I think that's a very nice uh, thing to, uh, to see in the laboratory. You have a very nice toys. I yeah, understand. yeah, I like the toys. Yes. <laughs> you like the toys. But I also like the interaction with the people. Yeah. Okay, why IVMP Bucharest, Romania? Oh, uh, well, I was, or, uh, I was invited um, some time ago, just before COVID by uh, George. And uh, everything was arranged, if, I, uh, if I'm correct. And then uh, the pandemic made it impossible to, uh, uh, to proceed with the, uh, uh, with the event. Uh, so uh, everything was... Uh, cancelled and, uh, and now uh, George uh, invited me again and of course I'm uh, extremely interested to see also uh, some uh, of the surroundings of uh, Bucharest and, and I've never been to Romania so, uh, so it's, it's an first opportunity. first time in Romania? Yeah and what I also like is to to go cross across the disciplines so I know it's more or less a hardcore uh, material science uh, uh, event uh, so it's nice if there is uh, somebody else like me uh, talking more about the biology, the interaction of materials uh, with uh, the biology, uh, and that that broadens perspective. And I think that's also what uh, what is needed uh, to to have translational value of the work that you do, because I think that's very important for me. Yeah, I I feel comfortable and I I feel um, encouraged if it is possible to take something from the laboratory to the patient. Okay. And that, that's, for me, that's the biggest challenge because I want to aid in the healthcare uh, of, of patients, or the, the, the well-being of patients. Today you have a presentation. Yes. Uh, so it's like uh, I'm seeing you have a double role to this conference. Correct. A presenter, you have a presentation and you'll be a chairman yes. later. Tell us something about your presentation. Yeah, the presentation. About. Yeah, the presentation. It's uh, well, as I said, it's a little bit different compared to uh, to what most people are presenting. So it's focused on biology, and what I focus most on is on uh, how does bone formation start? How is it initiated? What cells? What triggers are necessary to get bone formation started? Uh, and with the data that we have from uh, the research, also the publications, of course, resulting from that, uh, we show a controversy. So we show that it's not the stem cells that go into osteogenic differentiation and form the, uh, the osteoblasts that are the bone forming cells, it actually seems to be like the case that the osteoclasts, which are known as the, resorb uh, the bone resorbing cells, that those are the cellular trigger to induce bone formation. So these cells do not induce bone or do not form bone themselves, but they induce a cascade of events which we do not know fully, we don't understand uh, to the, the, well, the entirety of it, uh, but it seems to be that the osteoclast induce the start of a cascade of events that leads to bone formation, even, interesting. even in an environment where there normally is no bone available. So that's, what, as we call it, ectopic uh, sites, uh, so either underneath the skin or in the muscle. 
Okay, it's a very interesting subject. Yes. So a lot of people are very interested about your uh, your presentation. Hopefully. Congratulate yes. about that. Thank you. Another question. I'm interested how you managed to get funding in your country for the, for a project. How easy is today to get funding today and compared to, let's say, five, ten years ago? Uh, uh, it's getting more complicated. Uh, that's uh, that's a fact. Uh, but that's also because there are more people uh, applying for funding and because the uh, I think the total amount of funding is decreasing. So okay. the money that is available for funding is, is decreasing. Also, the, uh, the difficulty is that uh, fundamental research is, um, is funded less uh, and you need more collaboration with companies, for instance, to cover part of the cost for the research. And that's at least the case in the Netherlands, but I think it's also uh, in Europe already the case. Uh, so that means that uh, when you do that for the first time with a company involved in, the, in your research, uh, it works. Yeah. Okay. If you do it the second time, it becomes a little bit more complicated because maybe the company uh, does not want to continue or maybe the funds that the con company has available, uh, they consider another destination for that. Uh, and what is also a, a very delicate uh, thing there is um, we have to be very careful as academic researchers to not become a off-site laboratory for these companies, right? We need to, ha to have the freedom ourselves. So if you do something in, um, uh, as, a, let's say, as a contract with a, uh, with a commercial entity like a company, uh, then it's okay. Uh, then you, you do what is uh, uh, agreed upon. Uh, you get the data and then everything is fine. But if you want to do also partially um, fundamental research, yeah, you want to have the freedom. And so for everybody to use it, not only that company. Yes, but if you work with a company, then the freedom is less because you have to provide them with what they need, right? You have to also consider... Well, you provide and only and to them. Yeah, well, it's fair, of course. If they provide money for research, then you have to deliver. But uh, it's also decreasing the freedom that you have as, a, as an academic researcher. Do you think the issue is that the funding is addressable for all European Union, not for some countries or locally? Um, I think the biggest differences in, uh, in research and the cost for research uh, is also related to the, um, uh, to the cost for the, the researchers themselves. So if you look at research in the Netherlands, uh, it's mostly done by PhD students. Um, but the PhD track is considered a job. Uh, okay. For so many years ago, the PhD uh, track was considered uh, a training. The difference is that a job should be paid and that the training can be, be paid less or not. Can be paid less, can be covered with a fee. That's different. If you look at funding in the Netherlands, uh, I think at this moment around uh, 85% of the total sum is needs to be available for uh, for salaries okay. and that's yeah. too much is and we that cannot in that in that sense we cannot compete with countries uh, where labor is uh, cheap uh, we cannot compete with countries uh, where um, uh, for instance uh, where um, uh, research phd research is uh, seen as a as a training like in the us uh, like in china uh, like in india uh, like in Brazil, everything is uh, is different there. That's outside of Europe. That's because outside inside of Europe, Europe every, everywhere is the same. No, it's not everywhere the same because uh, different countries have different um, levels of salaries, uh, and that also makes it different. Uh, makes it difficult if you would go for uh, um, uh, a consortium uh, application in the European Union, then the low low salary countries with the same amount of money, they can do more than the uh, high salary countries. You said something about PhD students. Correct. You are using PhD students. Correct. How you manage to attract young researchers? How you manage to keep it to work with you for long term? Um, yeah, well, first of all, we, I don't use PhD students. Uh, I, I work with, that's uh, something different. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I think the very important difference, what I like is to build a team. But of course, uh, a PhD um, uh, trajectory normally in the Netherlands is four years. Uh, so after the four years, the time is up and the money is up. 
Uh, so uh, at that moment, I want to shake hands and uh, well, we would like to be, be friends. Uh, be friends, yes, and be happy with the outcome of the PhD uh, uh, research. Uh, and we would like to finalize that with a PhD thesis that can be defended in, in public. So that's for the PhD trajectory, that's the main goal. So I, I clearly see that we have uh, a role as a, a trainer of, um, of, of researchers to come from relatively, well, I would say, uh, unknown to uh, independent researchers. That's what I, what I want to do. That's the main objective of the, of the department. But of course, uh, we also would like to do very uh, effective research, very important research that has impact. Um, and uh, for that, uh, it's, it's important to build a trust relationship uh, with uh, PhD students. Uh, I hope that is uh, uh, something that is evident from my track record. I think uh, you, can, you can see it also. Of course, not with everybody, not with all the PhD students. Some of them go out to uh, commercial companies. Uh, others go to uh, kind of uh, policy uh, uh, jobs, uh, policy makers. But uh, those that stay within research, uh, I'm still in contact with them. And if they are, uh, mostly are also in, uh, in other countries, uh, even abroad, uh, uh, so outside Europe, yeah, I stay in contact and every now and then we have contact and we try to see if there are opportunities for joint uh, funding uh, or for uh, exchanges or whatever. So to, to see if there is a possibility to keep collaborating because the network is extremely important. Okay, you said we're discussing about young researcher. Yes. Uh, between young researcher and not even researcher, for young people, yeah. they are using AI. Correct. How do you see it in writing articles, writing papers on science? Yeah, that will become more difficult, of course. Um, in you general, use it, do you try it? Yes, of course. And? Everybody does. Not everybody. Not everybody. No, no, right? not, not, not everybody says well, he does. Then hopefully it. I'm still young enough to still <laughs> to, to use it. Yeah, yeah. Um, you are, let me say and congratulate you. Yuan was the first one who said, yes, I'm tested. Yeah. Because I, a lot of... Other people I interviewed, no, yeah. I didn't use it, no. Yes, we do. We do that. And, and? The, the, the reason for doing that is because it can be helpful. How? And, and it's not to make stories, but it's to formulate stories in such a way that they are most effective. That if you have a reader that is, is reading the text, clearly understands what you're, what you're trying to, to bring across. Right? The message. is something you already have the paper, you have the research results and everything. Correct. All that, Correct. And ask for AI to arrange it in some way in order to Correct. be more I, available for the public. Of course. I will not uh, 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 ask um, uh, ChatGPT uh, to make me, for instance, uh, a, a five-page paper on a certain subject. No, no, that's not the way I do it. What I do is I make my, my text myself. I upload it in such an AI uh, instrument uh, and then I say can you make this more effective can you make this more readable can you make this in, in that way in that way and, and, and it works also very well uh, for titles uh, titles of, uh, of manuscripts titles of, uh, of abstracts that you submit uh, to, um, uh, to conferences or that I think that that works very uh, helpful for that and, it, and it's, nice. it's a good thing it's a so we have to, of course, be also critical uh, because, but I think it belongs to the integrity of the, of the researchers uh, that they will not use such uh, instruments uh, currently available uh, to produce text, right? It's, it's to modify text. To arrange it. It's to, to make it better, to, to make, make it more smooth, to make it more clear uh, in such a way. I think that's very important, um, but I'm definitely not against. Okay. You said you have some competition from researchers outside of European Union. The research outside of the European Union. You where discuss about PhD from Brazil, yes. from China, yes. from USA. Yes. Yes. How do you see the competition from researchers outside of the European Union? Now they are speaking English more easily. With AI tools, you mean? With AI. Definitely. Yeah, yeah. You cannot see the difference anymore. So. Um, I do a lot of uh, uh, reviews, uh, reviewing tasks for, uh, for a wide number, a large number of journals. So, uh, of course, in the, in the past, and still, you can still see it, uh, depending on the country uh, where the manuscript originates from uh, and the list of co-authors, normally, of course, it's not always uh, fully blind, but you can tell if there is a native speaker there or if there is um, a no-native speaker. Let's, let's call it like that. Yeah, but um, yeah. 
with tools like uh, AI yeah, uh, that can uh, modify text, yeah, it becomes more difficult to discriminate between different countries, which is not necessary, of course, but it's also a little bit delicate to see if uh, what is now the real value of a work. Because if you write it in a very decent way, in a very, well, convincing way, yeah, a bad result or a, a less well result, let's call it like that, can still be written in a manuscript as something that it seems to be extremely valuable. So it becomes a little bit more tricky there. So but if you, if you look in general, and then uh, I talk about um, biomaterials and about uh, uh, regenerative medicine, uh, you see that most of the, uh, the papers uh, come from uh, Asian countries. Uh, so uh, even before AI, yeah, that difference was already there. So the overload of, uh, of uh, scientific data from Asia uh, is clear. Uh, what is happening now with AI is that the textual quality of these uh, of these manuscripts that they submit uh, that, that gets better, and uh, that in itself it, that's a good thing. So uh, I, I don't uh, I don't mind. Okay, uh, we are at the end of this interview. Okay, some few words for the organizer. Sorry, some some few words. Oh yeah, great! I, I like uh, the entire setting here. I like the atmosphere. What? What you like it? What I like is uh, the the dungeon that I'm in uh, right <laughs> now. But uh, uh, I like the setting with the, all the uh, the speakers. Uh, I like that they also try to find people that are a little bit different from the core hardcore uh, material scientist. Uh, I like the setup of the uh, of the meeting in in uh, in the program the way they did it. Uh, and of course, I also like to uh, to see something of the world. Uh, even though um, uh, Bucharest is, uh, let's say, a little bit more than two hours uh, by uh, by plane from uh, from where I live, uh, I've never been here, and I'd like to see new places. So, uh, having the opportunity to discuss with other people, to see if there are opportunities to collaborate, uh, and also see something uh, in different countries, how it works, and also uh, cultural uh, aspects there, I think that's uh, that's a lovely uh, combination. Thank you very much. Yes, you're welcome.